Hello again, everyone. I'm Pastor Joel Jones of Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide, and we're back with another segment of our Walking Through the Bible study series. Of course, you all know the coronavirus uh, COVID-19 situation is uh, still going on. So as the Lord allows, we're going to be uh, working uh, from home instead of the sanctuary at this time. Uh, so in wisdom and submission to God and, and the, uh, <clears throat> the government, we are uh, taking an alternate route. But we still plan on bringing the word of God. Amen. We're all going to still show ourselves approved to God, be diligent to study to show ourselves approved. Amen. So I want to welcome all of you. And uh, let's just go to the Lord in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, we gather again before you. We thank you, as always, uh, Lord God, not now in the sanctuary, but in our respective homes. But we thank you, Lord, that the church is in us. So, Lord, be with us tonight as we endeavor to hear from you in all things. Bless us, Lord, in this study. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Now, we, this is sort of new to us, so we, we're doing, we uh, have had a few little technical problems and I will uh, advise you all, hang in there. Hang in there. God is working all things out for his good. So we're going to continue in our study tonight. And uh, it's a good night, at least where we are here in Fairfield. It is a good night to be indoors and in the coziness of the Lord. And as I said before, I'm so glad that uh, he is in us and we are in him. Amen. Amen. So... Uh, we left off in Isaiah chapter 6, and I think at the end of the uh, broadcast last week, we had a couple of little glitches, technical problems, which were unforeseen. So I apologize for those, uh, for any part of the broadcast that you may have missed last week. Uh, I think maybe the picture became frozen or something like that. But you know how it is with spiritual warfare. I mean, if you know that we are in a spiritual war. All right. This is warfare being waged, uh, but we're going to continue to forge on. So what we'll do now is we'll recap a little bit. And I want to finish chapter six tonight if we can. So um, <clears throat> we're going to recap just a bit so that we can all be on the same page. All right. Amen. So so again, I want to welcome all of you who are tuning in. I'm hearing phones ringing b b uh, bells and that's OK. That's OK. Whichever way you need to get on the line. That's all right, because Amen. as you know, because of this uh, situation, this pandemic, uh, as, as uh, one of our uh, members said, companies are, are crowding the phone line. So all kinds of people are getting in. So we pray that the Lord will give us favor that we can continue his class. Amen. Amen. So last week um, we discussed how Isaiah was summoned. Do you all remember what happened uh, in Isaiah 6? Anybody? And as you, if uh, how Isaiah was summoned, Isaiah was called by the Lord to be a messenger of the Lord. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You all remember that? He was called. How was he called again? We said through an amazing vision. God calls people in different ways. He called Isaiah with strong visions. Amen. Amen. So Isaiah was given a vision uh, which God sent to him. And I'm sure that all of you remember that incident that it, it was covered in, in this chapter. So let me ask you this. What things come to mind after seeing how Isaiah responded to this vision? What things come to your mind? For example, me personally, what comes to my mind is that I was taken uh, by how um, when Isaiah saw the splendor and the glory of the Lord in his throne room, that Isaiah was humbled. So that comes to my mind, the humility that came out of Isaiah just being in the presence of God. Is there anything that 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 sort of tugs at you that you noticed about this? What comes to mind after seeing how Isaiah responded to this vision? And Wanda said he realized the majesty of God. He realized the majesty of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, Sister Elwanda. Isaiah was, was blown away. He realized that he was standing on holy ground in front of holiness, the majesty of God. 
Amen. Just to be in his presence. Amen. Just being in his presence. Just being in the presence of the Lord. That's an amazing Recognize thing. The holiness of God when we're in his presence. He said, Woe am I. I am a man of unclean lips and among unclean people. Amen, Minister Dora. Isaiah said, Look, I, I'm a I'm an unclean I'm unclean I'm an unclean man and of unclean lips. I do I belong here? Do I belong here? I mean, uh, we talked about that last week uh, when I realized who God was and that he was sending uh, uh, ministering angels my way and Pastor Annalisa's way. I said, who am I that the Lord wants, wants me for what? So I can relate to that, you know? Mm -hmm. How about you all? Did, did the Lord, is it, isn't it uncanny that the Lord calls us to be his children? Oh, that's Amen. amazing. So we see that uh, uh, how Isaiah realized that he was sinful before God and uh, uh, how uh, I, I don't know if any of us really realize uh, uh, or, or have thought about that, that, that we, when the Lord calls you for, for, for a service, no matter what the position is, just, I'll tell you, just that I know just that God allowed me to be saved, that would have been enough for me. I don't need to be a pastor. I don't need to be a, a, a so-called leader. I'm a servant of the Lord. Just to be invited to, to dwell in the presence of the Lord would be enough for me. And so I'm thankful. So I can imagine how Isaiah felt seeing this vision. Alma says it would be an honor. It's an honor, isn't it? Yes, Sister Alma, it's an honor. It's a privilege. And we need to not forget that. We need to remember the, the honor it is to serve the Lord in whatever capacity, in whatever capacity the Lord calls us. Uh, so Isaiah sees the vision of splendor in the, in the throne room. And now in verses 6 and 7, I'm going to go there for a minute, the scripture says that the seraphim, touches Isaiah's mouth with a live coal, and he says to Isaiah, your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. I want you to ask you, you all a question about that. What's the significance of this act that you think, if, if, if any, where the seraphim uh, uh, touches verse? Isaiah's lips with the live coal? That's verses 6 and 7 of chapter 6 where the seraphim uh, speaks to Isaiah and he says, let me see. It says, then one of the seraphim flew to me. This is Isaiah talking, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Now, the question I asked was, what's the significance, if any, of this act? I just want you all to think about that for a minute. I'll give you a chance to, to think about that. Is there some significance to here to that? And then I want to bring a point home. A burning coal mm -hmm. had been taken from the altar. Okay, the burning coal, that, that's, that's like our sin. Sin is like, like fire. It's like, it's like uh, something hot. It's like something... Or are you getting there? <laughs> okay. You're I'm almost there. Saying, you're, you're the so... sin has been removed and covered by God's righteousness. Come on now. The sin has been removed. That's a purification. He was purified. Yeah. Burning away. Right? Y'all all jumping on that now. Sister, 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 sister Dora said the sin. Uh, uh, what would you say, Mr. Dora? Say it again. He, he was uh, purified and cleansed uh, to be made holy and used for God's service. Amen. Amen. He was cleansed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was a, a, a cleansing for unrighteousness. It's also, a, it, yes, Sister Jeanette says it. To serve him, to serve him with great joy and humility. Amen. Amen. It was, yeah. Sister Jeanette is agreeing with Minister Dora and Minister Dora with Sister Elwanda and and what what is the pastor? And you know what? And that is just in piggyback on all three of them piggyback. A lot of piggybacking and, going on here. Oink, oink. Go ahead. No. And, 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 and it's like our sins are, 
it's like our, our sins when we when we when we sin against God. It's like it's like fire. It's like uh, the Lord just cleansing us with that fire, with that purifying mm -hmm. fire, mm -hmm. cleansing up our our sins. Amen. And clothing us with what they say at piggyback with with His righteousness and taking away our unrighteousness. Amen. Well, I agree. You all are all on the same track. And uh, see, I, I, I like it. You all help me. With, you're helping me with this study, and I, I appreciate that. Here's a point to consider about the, the burning coal. First of all, let me ask you this question, since you all know that it had to do with sin. First of all, was it the coal that, that purified Isaiah? Was it the coal that purified him? Was it the seraphim that purified him? Which one was it? It was him confessing his own sins that purified him. Him confessing his own sin. Well, the, the, the seraphim, the, do you mean the angels? Uh, the, what, what did you what was the We question? said that the coal, the coal, you all said that the coal basically uh, uh, um, signified sin and the purification process, right? Uh -huh. We agree on that. So. I'm asking a question. This is just a question thrown out there that the Lord put on my heart. Was it the coal that that cleansed him, or did the seraphim cleanse him? What? How was he cleansed? Well, sister, um, sister uh, Doris said it was God, and everybody started right. kicking back in on her. And brother <laughs> Terry said, "Represent Holy Spirit and uh, God the Son, Holy Spirit." Yeah, because, absolutely. Because an object cannot purify us. Absolutely, we don't an want angel, to lose sight. Do it. An angel cannot purify us. Absolutely, and we don't bow down to angels, right? Mm-hmm. No, and, make no. The coal came from the altar of God. The, the, the coal from the altar. The coal from the altar. And the altar now, what happened on the altar? What what is what generally is an altar used for in those days? Sacrifices, oh, down, sacraments, sacrificing. different things like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we know it's a holy situation mm -hmm. and it's the throne room of God, yet it's God that purifies us, isn't it? It was God divine anointing said Alma. Uh, uh, uh. It's God that purifies, just like as mm -hmm. as uh, Sister Doris said. And, and, and it was God that cleansed him. You see, now throughout the Bible, fire serves as, uh, it's, it's symbolic. That's what, that's what I was getting at. Fire can symbolize the wrath of God, mm -hmm. but it also can signify purification. Mm -hmm. So in this vision, I, I said when we first started this study that Isaiah uses a lot of visualization grand spectacles he lays it out for you so in this vision that the lord gave him uh, uh we're seeing this coal which signifies in this case does it signify wrath or purification 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 right that coal being hot like fire mm -hmm. okay touches his lips and purifies him mm -hmm. okay just as a, a bessemer furnace uh, uh, purifies metal and burns off all the dross, doesn't it? And that's what we're seeing in this, that uh, that's how God uh, uh, signifies purifying his people back in the day. And he did the same thing with Isaiah. OK, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so God, the, the throughout the Bible, we'll see that fire is used for um, God's wrath, fire being rained down. Or, or God's purification. It can burn off the sin, in other words. And that's the depiction that we see with this live coal being removed from the altar, from God's holy place, as an object of fire to cleanse this sinner whom God's going to use. I tell you, God is amazing. Mm -hmm. God is amazing. You know, if you look at uh, uh, Psalm 51.7, I think it is, it says, cleanse us with hyssop. See, mm -hmm. it's the same principle here where the cleansing is coming through a hot coal on this prophet that God has called to do his will. But he can't use him yet. He's got to purify him. He's got mm -hmm. to he's got to get him where he needs to be. Then he's going to use him. So he says, I got to do a quick work in this one. Purify him Psst, just like that. And that's what God can do. So uh, sister, um, 
Sister Audrey said it was uh, Isaiah submitting entirely. Yes. Entirely. That's part of to it. To God's service, con being consecrated. Amen. And, and once it touched his lips, this once it touched his 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 lips, his iniquity was taken away was and taken his away. sin was purged. He and was, only God can do that. Only God can do it. That's what Sister Audrey is saying. That's another thing. Isaiah submitted completely, immediately. Uh -huh. He said, here am I, send me. He was cleansed. He was ready to go. Uh -huh. Now, Isaiah was cleansed and purified, okay, and was now ready to do the Lord's work. He was ready to go out and do the Lord's work. You remember when, when Saul became Paul? Remember on the road to Damascus? Uh -huh. As soon as he, as soon as Jesus, uh, he said, what 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 do you want me to do, Lord? And the, and the Lord told him, put him on straight street. Mm -hmm. As soon as he received his his sight, phew, Paul was on the way. He was doing the work, wasn't he? Yes. Uh, see, when God comes to you zeal. and He touches you, phew, you're turned you're you're turned around. He yeah. he purifies. He wants to purify us. Do you see a parallel in our lives as Christ followers? And it, 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 can you can you take this situation that happened to, to uh, Isaiah, anybody, can you take it and explain to me if that works in our lives and how so? If anybody wants to explain that. What, what are we explaining now? Okay, I'll repeat it. Uh, this situation that we see in Isaiah, Isaiah was a sinner. He was a man of unclean lips. Mm -hmm. uh, God purifies him and he goes out and does the job for the Lord. Mm -hmm. So the Lord calls him, touches him, cleans him up, and goes out and sends him out. And he was ready. Is that how it happens in the church? Well, first you have to be called. Oh, man, somebody else is saying something first. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, Elwanda said, the things I used to do, I don't do anymore. Ah. I have no desire to. No, Elwanda says she has no desire to do the things she used to do anymore. That's a purification process, isn't it? Yeah, and the, the, uh, the fruit of that is, the fruit of being anointed, called anointed and appointed is, being called anointed and appointed, appointed you see the fruit of that. You were able to see the fruit of mm -hmm. someone being called anointed, appointed, because you got pastors, preachers, teachers, evangelists, prophets, prophetess. They all said they were called. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, you saw it in Isaiah. You saw the fruit. You saw him working for the Lord. You saw it in uh, Saul, who later became Paul. So the, it's the fruit that you see. Not the lip service, but mm -hmm. your, but the action. All right. And a, and a brother, let me see, this is a Brother Terry. My sin is purified in Jesus' blood. And by Jesus' blood, your sin is washed away. Amen. Um, so we see that there is a parallel. That's what I was getting at, and you all explained it. There's a parallel to this in our lives today as Christ followers so that we shouldn't take it lightly when we sign on with the Lord, then, should we? A change should be obvious, said mm -hmm. Wanda. Uh -huh. And I would say God definitely did. Oh, she said, uh, Elma said, God definitely did that with Pastor Joel and Annalisa. Amen. Amen, Sister Elma is saying that. Well, when I read this, I thought about how we come to Christ, that we have to come confess our sin, agreeing with God, and then yes. coming to Him and saying, I repent of Absolutely. Forgiven, and now he can use us for his glory. Amen. Minister Dora is saying that we have to come to God fully submitted. Once he calls us, uh, that's the deal. He makes you an offer, and you have to sign this contract, uh, basically, spiritually, that you will submit to God. Now the contract is in full effect. Did you guys hear? Can you guys hear Minister and, Dora? And I'll tell you something. I know this to be so because when the Lord called me in 2004 and I didn't even know Jesus, he said, uh, I have a plan for you and your wife, but it starts right here, right now, today, this night. He said, but you must repent your sins to me right now. And that was the deal. That was the offer on the table. Now, uh, Isaiah had an offer on the table the same way. And then the Lord said, you must repent your sins. I didn't know 1 John 1, 9. 
And what does it say in 1 John 1 and 9? If you confess your sins, he is faithful, faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you. Cleanse you. you of all unrighteousness. That's the hot coal. The cleansing you. Once you go into uh, 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 partnership with the Lord, this is it. I'm going to get you cleansed. Now I'm going to use you. And I didn't had never read the Bible. And this word came to me that way. I heard him speak it and I humbled myself and I had to. And because I knew this has to be God. So, again, I didn't know the Bible, but I, you have to humble yourself. And that's what Isaiah did. Yes, so ma Sister Audrey said, the more clearly Isaiah saw God, the more Isaiah became aware of his own power, powerlessness and, and, inadequ and inadequacy. Amen. Amen. That is so true. That is Amen. so true. The, the, that's why the Lord the says, the Lord says, see, see, see him clearly. That, right? that, that's a relationship, right, Audrey? That's a relationship. Right. The more clearly Isaiah saw God, mm -hmm. the closer you are, the, the relationship that we have with the Lord, we become so sensitive and so aware of how powerful he is and how powerless we are and how inadequate we are that we need him every for everything and we need to go to him for everything. And that's being a child. That yes. I agree with you, uh, Sister Archie. <clears throat> you have to be able to know that God is greater than man. He's greater than us. He's greater than you. That without him, we don't, we don't have an answer. We don't stand a chance. So in order for us to, now here's something. Watch this. In order for us to uh, effectively convey God's word then and others in truth, coupled with righteous actions, and that's what Pastor Annalisa was talking about, so that it's not lip service. Anybody can say they believe in God. But now you've got to go out and do it. In other words, you're, you're, you can't just walk the walk, talk the talk. Now you've got to walk the walk. We should, there's going to be some fruit coming in from somewhere, right? So we've got to be purified like Isaiah and be submitted to God. Is that right? Amen. Or, Amen. Uh, or can we just say we, you know, um, once we, once we uh, accept God, then uh, we should be given the whole nine yards. Huh? But but it says right here we have to do just as just as the, the just as the scripture says in James one twenty two what does it say the the but we're supposed to be not hearers only doers be doers of the word not hearers only because when you're hearers only deceive what do you do yourself. you deceive yourself there's a lot of deception going on in the church mm, that's why the doors are being there's closed. a lot of deception going on in society, in so-called, so-called Christians. I'm sorry, but there's a lot of deception going on. There are people that say they're following the Lord and come to church and go home and do exactly what they want to do and go back and they go back to their old ways. But 2 Chronicles 5, 17, what does it say? If anyone's in Christ, he's a what? New creation. Old things. Pass away. Behold. All things. All things are made new. new. And um, Sister uh, Lucille, hi, Sister Lucille, said, and how wonderful and caring he is. Yes, how wonderful and caring the Lord is, Sister Lucille is saying. And of course, uh, we can't forget now that God is calling Isaiah for what? Service. Service, amen. Service, to be a prophet, to be a messenger. He's calling him for service. Mm -hmm. When the Lord called me, he said, I'm calling you. And I have a plan for you and your wife. And that's what he said. Now, he didn't say I was going to be a pastor. I was confused enough, okay, hearing the voice and hearing from angels. I was, I was messed up enough. I was a man of unclean lips and everything else at that time. So when the Lord called me, though, he let me know that he had a plan for, for And he had a plan for Isaiah. And watch how he did it. He said, whom shall I send? <laughs> In other words, he asked a rhetorical question. He knew who he was sending. He knew who he was calling. But he wanted to see if Isaiah, how Isaiah himself would take on the position. He knew, did, did the Lord know Isaiah was going to come? Yes or no? 
He asked him, whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? Like, the Lord asked a question. Like, he the Lord know. is sovereign. He knows everything. But, but did he ask a question like that? No. He said, whom shall I send? You know why? Because God is a loving God. He won't force you to do anything. He'll compel you. He'll put it before you and allow you to eat of it or not. Amen. He said, whom shall I send? Like, hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm looking. And he's already putting the hot coal on his mouth to make sure that Isaiah is purged. And Isaiah steps up, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He steps up and says, he said, here am I, Lord, send me. I'm, I'm purged. So when the Lord called me and said the things he said and said, I have a plan, but it starts right here, right now, this night, but you must repent your sins. That's what you do. And then Wanda said, and he gave him, the Lord gave him a chance to make the choice. He gave Isaiah a chance to make the choice. Thank you, Sister Elwanda. That's what Elwanda said. And I'll tell you, I'm telling you, and I have to give part of the testimonies because That's what to Paul show did. that God is still the same. Yesterday, Yesterday today, today, and forever. And forever as it says in, no in, respect in, of persons. in, in Hebrews 13, 8. He, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He, 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 he gives you a chance. Hey, that's what he did with us. He said, I, I, it starts right here, right now, but, but you must repent your sins. Then he said, I will never take this away from you. My covenant. My covenant. He said, only you can break the covenant. Mm -hmm. So I could have broken the covenant at any time. I don't know what would have happened, but I would have broken if I had broken the covenant. But he you gives you here today. So, so he, uh, that's what you're saying, Pastor Emily. He could have left me if he wanted to, okay? <laughs> My wife. She's so sweet. She's a loving little thing. Anyway, that's why she's behind the camera. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, uh, the Lord, uh, it, he's he the same. Break his covenant. He won't break his covenant with you. That's what I'm trying to say. He will not break his covenant. He'll give you the opportunity. It's up to you uh, to, to stay with it. Brother Ron, I think this is Ron C.E. Fun. I'm, I'm not sure if this, if this is uh -huh. Brother Ron, but maybe he's our Brother Ron. He gives us free will. Free will. And then Wanda said, it says again, we need your testimony as a reminder. Yes. And Alma said, he knows who will. It is us. It is uh, us who needs to heed his calling. Mm -hmm. Liz is laughing out loud. Pastor must have said something. <laughs> Talked about me or something. No, I didn't. And, uh, and uh, Adam David said he always gives us free will. Yes, he does. Thank He's you a, all for your comments. Thank you. He's a good God. And uh, so what I'm getting Hi, at. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. What I'm getting at now is this. What he did for Isaiah. What he's done for me. What he's done for others. What he did for Saul who became Paul. What he did for Ezekiel. Oh, wait till we get to Ezekiel. You want to hear a story. What he did for him and took him from one place to another just to get him to do, to, to sign on and do the work. That's what he does for us. Now, we, we can't forget that the word of God says in 2 Corinthians, okay, in 2 Corinthians 5.20, uh, it, what it says is, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. What does that mean? How does that relate to this story about Isaiah? Do those two verses have anything? Does that verse have anything to do with what happened to Isaiah? I'll just let you all chew on that for a minute. Second Chronicles. God called him to represent him to the people to go to the people and say, Thus said the Lord. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's, you see, it's about service. Sister Dora says the same as what it says in 2 Chronicles 5.20. We are ambassadors for Christ. We represent Christ. We're to go to the people. We're to go to our families. We're to go to our jobs. We're to, to, to speak people through this epidemic through this pandemic that we're going through now he sent isaiah the same way now isaiah was a rep for god amen samuel was a rep for god nathan was a rep for god moses was a rep for god they had to go out and do a job mm -hmm. no different with us today 
You see, no different with us today. Anointed and appointed to do God's if, will. If the Lord wanted Say to write Lord. another Bible, your names who are in the Lamb's Book of Life would be in that Bible. He would say, on this day, Miss Adora was called to do such and such. Her story would be in there somewhere. Sister Audrey, Brother Terry, Brother Johnny, Yolanda. You know, that, that, that your, our stories would be in that Bible somewhere. Little Lucille. Little Lucille. Sister Jeanette. He would have our stories in that Bible because he's using each of us for something for his good. Mm -hmm. We are ambassadors for Christ. His name is written across our chest. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens. That's what I want us to. Anytime you're called to be an ambassador, you stand to represent that thing. That mm -hmm. place, mm -hmm. that country. And as ambassadors for Christ, we represent that God, the one and only true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, that's what this is about. You see, that's what this is about. So, so uh, uh, certainly we cannot afford to just talk about Christ. We got to what? We got to be about Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's we that we get. I don't know if you got that from this. This little excerpt about the hot coal, but that's what it gave me. That's why it's so hard for me to get through this Bible. That's why it takes so long, because that one little verse took me all the way around and all the way through when the Lord came and all the way through Paul and Saul and all the way through how God is still calling his people to do his work. That's amazing. Each one of us must not just talk the talk. We got to walk the walk. We got to uh, walk the walk. Now I'm getting my talks and walks mixed up. You all know what I'm talking about. We can't just talk the talk. We've got to walk it, right? Walk the walk. So let's read on. I want to finish this, um, unless you all have something else. Yeah, Let Ron said, his word says we must all go out and share and spread his words. We have the responsibility to God. We have a responsibility, Brother Ron says, to go out and spread the word. What's that called? The Great Commission, isn't mm -hmm. it? Uh-huh, each and every one of us, okay? And you can find that in uh, 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 Matthew 28, 19. You can find it in other places, but it talks specifically about that, uh, going to all the nations, okay? You can also you find it in the book Christ. of Mark, okay? You can also find it in Mark 16. And also said, when he strengthens us, we're supposed to go out and strengthen our brothers. Amen, amen. As we're strengthened, then uh, that's a good that's a good point, Sister Jeanette. Sister Jeanette says, as he strengthens us, we should go out and strengthen our brothers. Can you strengthen someone if you're not strong? No, not no. Can you strengthen someone if you're not strong? No, because we because we need their help. You've got to have what for you to be strong. But, what did Jesus say in Acts one eight? You shall receive power. You shall see receive power. Mm -hmm. Where does the power come from? God, Jesus, Holy Spirit. Doesn't come from us, does it? Mm -mm. So we can strengthen someone, provided God is the strength that's fueling God. us, right? Yes. Okay. How much horsepower we got in us? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, mm -hmm. and, and exactly right. That's what Sister Jeanette means, that the strength of God being in us. So that's why it's important that we get this word in us, mm -hmm. right? Get the word in us. Now you can help somebody else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, you can you can not know the word of God and tell somebody about the word. And say, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm go to church. And you're mm -hmm. not going to church. That person's not going to see any strength in you, is he? Not only the power. He said you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come upon you. So it's the Holy Spirit. When you yes. open your mouth, he yes. said, I'll do the talking. I'll give you the wisdom. I'll give you the discernment. I'll give you the testimony. Yes, it's not us. Jesus says what? And he's going to send you a helper. Mm -hmm. Because we need help. Okay, absolutely. And, and this is very important. Brother Terry said, when God gives us a word, not for us to keep, but to share. Amen. And that goes with the, the knowledge. He said, freely, freely you receive, freely you give, right? You give mm -hmm. the knowledge that God gave you, but you can give false knowledge. You and can give false information if we don't have the word. That's why Second Timothy uh, 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 tells us what? Uh, uh, to present ourselves, be Approved. diligent, Second 15, right? Got it? Uh, uh, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, mm -hmm. a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. 
That's why it's important that we get that word in us, okay? Amen. So we can give it out. We can give it out because the word is flowing through you. And, yeah. and he did it yesterday, today, forever. Johnny says that uh, J Donut 38, mm -hmm, that's, that's Johnny. Johnny, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Absolutely. He's the same. He's great. He was great for Isaiah. He's greater. He's greater for us. Amen. And Brother Ron says, no, for we have to have experience and knowledge, which God will and show and can provide us strength. With So I guess he's saying, for, for we have to have experience and knowledge, which God will and can and on, can only provide us strength. Amen. And so, Amen. so Lucille said, and your actions always, and your actions always speak louder than your words. Ooh, absolutely. Action speaks louder than words. All those are right. Brother Johnny and Brother Ron, all those things are right. Um, and it lines right up with what we're talking about here. So let's read on. I want to try to finish this chapter. So you want Isaiah? Yeah, we're going to go to uh, verse 9 in, uh, in chapter 6. I, I don't think we, we read this part. I don't remember reading it. But uh, this is where... Uh, uh, where am I? This is where uh, uh, they touch his lips with the coal, the seraphim. And then uh, Isaiah says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? I'm reading from verse... Uh, eight now, and I'm going to read down and finish. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. And he said, speaking of the Lord, go and tell this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. Then I said, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities are laid waste and without inhabitant, the houses are without a man, the land is utterly desolate. The Lord has removed men far away and the forsaken places are many in the midst of the land, but yet a tenth will be in it and will return and be for consuming as a terebinth tree or as an oak whose stump remains when it is cut down. So the holy seed shall be its stump. Now, let's go up and take a look at some of that because I don't think we got a chance to talk about much of it. And so, so at the end, of, uh, that's what it says. Now, uh, who's speaking in verse 9 and 10? Who's speaking? Keep on hearing. But that's the Lord, right? That's the Lord speaking in verse 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. So so what's the meaning behind the instructions given in verse 9 and 10? Let's look at verse 9 and 10, just those. And, and uh, he says, go and tell the people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed. What does that mean? Yes, yeah, but the Lord still told him to keep on preaching when he said, How long? He told him until the city was okay. wasted. Okay. Without inhabitants. And he mm -hmm. told him, They're going to keep on doing what they're going to do, but keep okay. on preaching. But I'm going to have a remnant. Okay. <laughs> Is gonna... that what you all got from that? Well, Sister Doris. The Holy said... Sister, 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 uh, Minister Doris says, He, he sort of gave, uh, to, to sum it up, she said he gave Isaiah an impossible task. <laughs> Basically, he sent him to people who weren't going to listen, but said, tell them anyway. Right? Is that what you all agree with? Let me see. Audrey had something. She said two of two. The people would only repent when they had nowhere to turn to but okay. God like today. Okay. But yeah, what you're saying is an impossible task. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and talk to them. Uh, but they're going to be hard-headed. They ain't going to see okay. it. And... So we agree with that because we're going to run out of time. But we agree yeah. with that. Uh, yes. Yeah. In the last sentence, he says, in return and be healed. And that's when they have to repent. And then he'll okay. heal these things that he's going to do. Is that, that going to be that stump that's left a remnant? Okay, a remnant. All right. That's what Sister Jeanette said. There'll be a remnant. But I want to stay at 9 and 10 just for a minute because I want to clear that up first. Because this is the question. 
If that's what God did, that was, that was God's way of telling Isaiah that although he was to bring a message to his people, it's going to fall on deaf ears, right? Mm -hmm. Their hearts were going to be averse to repentance. They, they weren't going to be repentant, but, but so they were going to be carried away with sin. They were so carried away with sin, they had no plan to turn from sin. If, do y'all, we agree with that, right? Well, we got three, yeah. three. Okay, go ahead, Alice. Okay. Quickly. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, brother, see, when you say it quickly, you make Well, just nervous. a little bit. Don't, okay, don't so slow it down. Brother okay. Terry says, the more you speak, the less they hear. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, brother uh, Terry. Then, uh, Adam, uh -huh. not Adam, Michelle, Michelle said, keep on preaching even though they're not listening. Okay, Michelle says, um, keep preaching. And sister, no, and sister Doris said, the chance will be given, but not all will receive, just like now with what we are going through. Mm -hmm. And now Wanda says, stubborn and hard-headed people. Oh, <laughs> so all of you all are saying the same thing. It's almost like it's a no-win situation. It's like uh, Mission Impossible when he said, Mr. Phelps, if you choose to take this mission, and this tape will, will destruct, go tell these people, yet they won't listen, but you must tell them anyway. That's what the Lord did. So the people weren't going to listen. The Lord knew they weren't going to listen. Here's my question, all right? Since we're all on the same page now. All right then. Tell me, if God knew that Judah wouldn't listen, the people of Judah and uh, his people wouldn't listen, and why then why send Isaiah to those people? Why send him if they're not going to listen? Why? He knows they're not going to listen. He says they're hard-headed. Stiff neck, whatever else, or you like, like I wanted to say, why preach to them? Why send them? They will be without excuse because they heard the truth and they rejected the truth. Uh, uh. Okay, so Sister Dora true. says, Sister Dora says, they're going to be, uh, they'll be without excuse because they've heard the truth. Is that right? Anybody mm -hmm. else? Uh, I'm agreeing with Liz. Liz well, says Liz obedience. Say. So Liz says obedience. So he's testing Isaiah. For obedience, okay. Yeah, and, what and also for 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 them for obedience. Mm -hmm. Both parties are being tested. Both parties being tested for Yolanda obedience. Yolanda said, no matter their 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 ways, as long as they return to the uh -huh. Lord. Oh, this they is a good question. Saved. Okay. I'll, and uh and uh. Yolanda and, said they'll be saved. And uh and Sister Audrey said, mercy. He wants ah, us to value is in the warning. Ah, ah and somebody Yolanda said because he wanted to give them a chance to change. Okay, change. Somebody said mercy. Okay. All said, of this is correct. Alma me, said putting Isaiah through the test. Okay. All and, of this uh, is correct. Uh, Michelle says Michelle, a test. Michelle says it's a test. And, Alma and, says it's and, a test. Uh, and, uh, and Brother uh, Terry says, so Isaiah will obey. So right. it's a test. Okay. We got test, we, test, <laughs> test. We got obedience, testing, uh, 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 mercy. 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 Warning. Okay. Be safe. We're going to try to prove Obedience. this out. We're going to try to prove it out. What I got from the Lord was because God is merciful. God is merciful. God is merciful. Yes, it's obedience. Uh, first of all, all things work together for good to mm -hmm. those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. God just doesn't do one thing at one time. OK, he's mm -hmm. you're right when you say that mercy, when you say that uh, uh, I, I, obedience, Isaiah had to be obedient regardless. This is his right out the box. This is looks like his first assignment mm -hmm. looks like it may have been more in the Bible. But as far as we see here, this was a huge assignment. Go tell these hard headed people. I put the hot coal on you. Now go do this. Oh, mm -hmm. man, these people. So Isaiah has to go to these people. So we know there's some obedience going on in, in these people as well as in Isaiah. But God could smoke them anytime he wants. Mm -hmm. He could wipe them out. He says, I, they're not even going to be obedient. As a whole, they are not going to be obedient. But he shows mercy. Mm -hmm. Even in the midst of disobedience, of ministry. he makes a way. For people to still come clean, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He makes a way for those who will listen, mm -hmm. who will do the right thing. Now, this is what I want to do. I'm going to show you how we prove that out. Go to Genesis real quick. Go to Genesis 18. Let's go back there. This is the same God. 
This is this is way back, way back. Let's go back, 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 back. Let's go back to Genesis. Let's go back in the time machine. Let's go to Genesis 18 when he was talking to Abraham. Okay? Can we get mm -hmm. there? All right. So back in Genesis 18, and I think I'm going to have to go to about chapter, uh, verse 22. This is where he was about to smoke some people. Right? This was Sodom and Gomorrah. Y'all remember that? Back in chapter 18 of Genesis, let me see, let me get on the right page here because I don't want to waste time. But I'm going to go to verse 22. And this is when the three, when the two angels and the Lord came to uh, 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 Abraham. It says, and I'll read there, look, it says, Then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom, but Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, Would you destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Would you also destroy the place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to, to slay the righteous with the wicked so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you, speaking unto the Lord, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. Verse 26 says, so the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, indeed, now I who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than the 50 righteous. Would you destroy all the all of the city for the lack of five? So he, the Lord said, if I find there 45, I will not destroy it. And he, Abraham, spoke to him, the Lord again, and said, suppose there should be 40 found there. So he, the Lord, said, I will not do it for the sake of 40. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry. Abraham's pushing it. Let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose 30 should be found there. So he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And he said, indeed, now I've taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 should be found there. So the Lord said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. Then Abraham said, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak but once more. Suppose 10 should be found there. And he, the Lord said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham and Abraham returned to his place. Now, I had to read that because I wanted to speak on that for a minute and apply it. So we see from that amazing revealing conversation between the Lord and his servant Abraham that God is what? The same yesterday, he's, today. He's merciful. The same, right? He was willing to he was willing to uh, spare Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, Sodom and Gomorrah was tore up from the floor, up, right? It was messed up. It was messed up and confessed up. It was messed up like Festus. OK, and God still was going to have mercy on them. We well, we know what happened before he could have mercy on them. They tried to. Uh, 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 you know, they, they tried to, the rape and everything. They went, they went berserk. The, the demons really got busy, right? Mm -hmm. So he had to obliterate Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. Well, we know what happened, right? He, he totally destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He rained down fire and brimstone on their wickedness. Now, we'll go back to chapter 6 in Isaiah. We go back to the book of Isaiah. So getting back to Isaiah 6, the Lord sends Isaiah to the people even though the Lord says they won't listen. They won't listen. You got Sodom and Gomorrah all over again. Mm -hmm. And they won't listen. But he leaves a door open, doesn't he? Right. He leaves a door open to those who will still. He leaves a light on to show yes. the way in case there's one person who will come to the Lord and repent. It could change the whole dynamic. You see what I'm saying? Yes. If there are five people in a city. Now, we if there are five people in Fairfield that will do the right thing, that he'll yes. save Fairfield. Now, let's take it further in the United States. If there are two states in the United one state in the United States, might he not turn the plague around? How about globally? If, now the whole world, if it's a country here and a country there, might he not stop this plague? Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Sister Michelle said, but maybe and some of them all, will eventually... Get San Francisco and Vegas or whatever. Where, where a lot of things going on, but you still some remnant there. That's There's a remnant. There's a remnant. Possibly. Must be. Hopefully. Michelle said, but maybe some of them will eventually listen. And Audrey said, that is why we intercede today. Come on. When we pray, he answers. Come on. And uh, why Come on. Said, that's good. That's why it's so important for us as Christ followers, a remnant church to walk, to pray, to lift up prayer and supplication, as it says in, in the book of uh, Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Praying with all prayer and supplication, being watchful to this end uh, for the saints. Praying yes. for people that don't know the Lord. There yes. might be one. Is there one? Yes, but we have to come correct. Come on. Isaiah came correct. Yes. You can't go to people, a people, God is not going to send you to a people looking not like him, like him, acting not like him. God is not going to send you to a people. How can they come? How could, can the people come correct when you're acting incorrect, yeah, well. when you're acting like the world? So that's why you'll know them by their fruit. So when God sends people correct, when he sent a person to them, he like if he sent you to your family, they're going to look at your, they're going to look at you first. They're going to check you out first Absolutely. and see where, you know, are you coming in the image of your father? We as Christ followers, this is no game. And that's what I'm getting at. This is no game. God is now taking the lid off the church so we can see the church clearly. He is taking the lid off the name Christian and seeing, will the real Christians please stand up? That's what he's doing. So we have to understand that um, we have to walk the walk instead of just talk the talk. Now, there are churches, and God says there are the wheat is among the tares. God knows who's who. He knows. That's why this plague is being sent across. It's being sent across the world. He gave us a word today, and I think I was able to share it with Sister Liz earlier. But the Lord has said, this is a prelude of what's to come. He said, this, this, this wave that's going across the world now, he said, there are people dying, hundreds of thousands of people. Where are they going? Are they going to hell or are they going to heaven? We don't know, do we? Only God knows. But hundreds of thousands are dying now. And he said, and there's going to be some left behind. There's going to be a remnant left. Those who survive this virus will be left. And just like in Judah, there'll be some rebuilding going on in the land, won't it? Mm -hmm. People are going to have to get back to their jobs and get back to their way of life and pay their bills and get back to having faith in the country. Some might, might have to get back to having faith in God. There's going to be some rebuilding going on. He said, this is a prelude for when Jesus comes. See, because it's not over, because Jesus is coming back. And when Jesus comes, it's going to be worse. Instead of fighting over toilet paper, when Jesus comes and people are raptured up and planes are crashing because there's no pilot and cars are crashing because there's no drivers and homes are catching fire, it's really going to be a mess. So what we need to do is get our houses in order now. You see? Before, he's been giving chances and he's sending this plague as a blessing, as a blessing. So we see that we want to be guard. counted among the ones who know the Lord. Not you see what I mean? Off guard. Don't be caught off guard. The thief is coming. We're caught off guard now. But he says, I'm coming as a thief in the night. Did this plague come as a thief in the night? Overnight almost it happened. So we need to heed the warning that the Lord is giving us. But it's actually right here, way back in Genesis with Sodom and Gomorrah. He shows us again in Isaiah, and now he's showing us in 2020. We got to stop here. Brother, brother, brother DeMille says uh, that, uh, 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 what did Brother DeMille say? Let's see. He said okay. a couple of things. We're Not to be 2 Corinthians 5, 18, 20. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 18, 20. Uh, 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 and God's for the reconciliation. He's sent to reconcile us to the world. 
Yeah. And giving us the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. Amen. Absolutely. We 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 spoke on that earlier, and and uh, and that's absolutely true. As it goes on to twenty, and that's what I meant when I said ambassadors for the Lord. And here's the thing, folks. Uh, we're going to stop here. But what I'm praying for is that people will adhere to what's going on and see the big picture. That even through whatever Satan means for evil, God uses it for good. This is an evil thing that's happening. But God is going to get his glory out of it. And he's still leaving a door open for a remnant of people who will take this and change their ways and follow the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and Sister Phil is saying mm -hmm. he's, he's given us a chance. He's given us a chance, Sister Phil. Get our house in order. Absolutely right. So I pray that people will survive this calamity and truly turn uh, their lives over to the Lord, uh, just as the people in Isaiah's day uh, uh, returned from captivity in Babylon and the rebuilding process came after they were returned from captivity. Well, we're being held captive now to a plague, the whole world is at a standstill. God has allowed that plague to come through, that pestilence. And I pray that when we return from it, if he allows us to return from it, that we will start the rebuilding process and say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I am ready to follow you wholeheartedly. And we all have to do some soul searching. Those who don't know the Lord, but those who are in the church, especially leaders, start thinking about this because God is a forgiving God, but the clock is ticking. Amen. Amen. Uh, do you do you want to let the last three um, readings, Sister Doris, said he yes. gave us the Book of Revelations to let us know what is to come. Mm -hmm. His mercy, he didn't have to. Amen. Uh, Sister Sister Doris. Brother Ron, he's he's removing the veil and now exposing the false prophets and preachers That's right, who have Ron. misled many of us. Absolutely. Alma, God is still showing His grace and mercy yes, because he, is. he wants none to perish. That's Every right, knee shall down. bow. Uh, uh, and uh, Karen says amen and to get ready uh, for Christ. Hey, praise God, Sister Karen. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you all. So we're going to stop here. God willing, I'm going to ask that you all be ready up to chapter 10 next week. Uh, we want to get to some of the prophecies uh, of Christ and different things that are going so much going on in Isaiah. We could stay here all week. And uh, but we have well, to we move a little time. bit. We pass at least that we have the time. So, uh, but we just might. But anyway, uh, just read ahead at least to chapter ten, and we're going to jump around. We may even go further. But uh, whatever it is, we will let the Lord, the Holy Spirit lead us. Amen. Amen. And uh, so we're going to stop here. And to those of you who are joining us, who have joined in, if you don't know the Lord, please I implore you with everything in me. I, I pray that you will come to the Lord. I pray that you give your lives to the Lord. Uh, the time is running out. Um, you don't have to know Jesus to know that this is the most uh, devastating thing that's been seen in, in major, in the history, I believe, in, of, the of the world, that the whole world is at a standstill. And it's because God's people, his creation, have tuned him out, just as your child tunes you out, and he's got his earphones on playing with his X Xbox, and you're trying to get his attention. He's going, huh, huh, and he's not even looking at you because and you're saying, hey, 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 hey. Then you finally pull the cord out the wall. He goes, hey, what'd you do that for? Now, will you hear me now? Do you hear me speaking? And that's what God is doing. So it's time we come to the Lord. If you don't know Jesus, what you need to do is repent your sins now. This Ask him to come into your life. This is the day of salvation. It's here, you all. So if you pray this prayer with me, you'll be accepted into the kingdom, provided you're praying this prayer with sincerity of heart, that you really mean to uh, repent and come to the Lord. I'd like to lead you to him by praying this prayer. Repeat after me. Those of you who don't know Jesus, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. Like Isaiah, I'm a man or woman of unclean lips. Yes, I'm asking you that if you are God who died for us and he raised you from the dead, I'm asking if you would come into my life and be my savior. I need salvation. I don't want to perish. I'll yes. follow you and learn from you if you will have me in Jesus' name. Jesus. 
Amen. If you've prayed that prayer with sincerity, congratulations. Amen. You are now under the umbrella of God. You are now Amen. under his protective wing. Get yourself a holy Bible. Start studying it. Get yourself a nice study Bible and find yourself a church where they're preaching the true word of God. Now, it's going to be hard to find one in the next couple of weeks, I imagine, because churches are closed down. But get with a church that's going to at least on the air. And uh, that's preaching the true word of God. Let the Holy Spirit come into you and guide you. You're welcome to uh, uh, tune in to Spirit of Truth Church Worldwide. We are, we're on uh, Periscope on Saturdays at uh, Sundays at 1 p.m. And uh, we also have a radio uh, broadcast that goes out on uh, 1190 a.m. called Miracles of God on Saturday mornings at uh, uh, 1030 and I think on Sundays at 1030. So. The word is there. And if not us, go just find, just get in that word and start reading it from cover to cover and God will uh, guide you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to adjourn. I know we're over. We're going to pray out. And uh, Pastor Alice is holding up something. I can't see it. But anyway, we're going to pray out and uh, we pray that you all will uh, come back and uh, join us again next week. God willing with another segment of our Walking Through the Bible series. So let's pray. Father, we thank you right now. Thank you, Father. I thank you for this time. I thank you for this uh, stimulating study. I thank you for all those who tuned in, Lord God, to participate and learn your word. Be with us now as we go from here. Give us peace and protection. We thank you. We honor you. We have faith in you, Lord. And we give you all praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. And we all say amen. 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 God bless you all. Have a wonderful night in the Lord. We thank you.